There are many more gifts than just these. Paul also mentions gifts of teaching, helps, administration, and others. Each of these gifts are given so that the believer may serve Christ, fulfilling Jesus' words to his disciples in the book of John. The Holy Spirit shall glorify me, for he shall take of mine and shall disclose it to you. Since we cannot live the Christian life without the power of the Holy Spirit, it is imperative that we submit ourselves to God on a daily basis, that the power of the Spirit might be made manifest in our lives, that we can adequately represent Christ in all of our thoughts, feelings, and actions. Even though the Holy Spirit provides guidance, encouragement, teaching, and special abilities, His most important expression through our lives is character. The Holy Spirit will never behave in a way that is contrary to God's character. Since the Holy Spirit lives in the Christian, then we should expect that a Christian who is living a life submitted to God will also demonstrate the character of God. The Apostle Paul characterizes this kind of life as the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. When it comes to understanding who Jesus Christ is, we find it easy to grasp many aspects of His nature. For instance, when we learn that the Son of God was born in human flesh, we can get our minds around the idea to understand that Jesus was human as well as divine. We may not comprehend everything about His nature, but we can grasp it enough to understand His identity. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we sometimes have greater difficulty. First, the Holy Spirit is not a flesh and blood person. We sometimes have trouble in our perceptions. How exactly do I have a relationship with an incorporeal supreme being who lives inside of me? How do I tell the difference between what Jesus says and the Holy Spirit says? Do I worship the Holy Spirit in the same way that I worship Jesus and the Father? Let's address these difficulties by looking at three common errors about the person and work of the Holy Spirit and try to get a proper view of who He is and what He does. Error number one. The Holy Spirit is not a person, but a force, or an expression of God's power. This is a common error that happens for many reasons, not the least of which is that human beings perceive titles, names, and relationships differently than God uses them in the Bible. We recognize the word Father as a title, but we also accept it as a name. We call our own fathers by that title as if it were a name. We also understand the basic relationship of a father, which helps us understand the personality and relationship of our Heavenly Father. The same is also true with the Son of God. We call Him Jesus, a personal name. We grasp the role that is implied by the word Son. But when it comes to the title Holy Spirit, we become confused. Is it a proper name? Is it a title? The title itself does not seem analogous to human relationships that are familiar to us. Thus, some Christians think that the Holy Spirit is a force from God or a power of God, but not a person. Correction number one. The Holy Spirit is a real person with all of the attributes of divine personality. The Holy Spirit's role is certainly one of power, but His power is no different than the Father's and the Son's. His power is simply expressed in a different way because of the role He occupies in relationship to the Father and the Son and us. Make no mistake, though we refer to the Holy Spirit by a title, instead of what we commonly think of as a name, He is a person with all of the attributes of personality. Look at these personality attributes of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives gifts. A force does not give gifts. He can be lied to. Only a person can be lied to. He speaks personally to believers. Only a person can speak. The Holy Spirit creates. Only a person has creative attributes. And the Holy Spirit knows the mind of God. Knowing is an attribute of personality. An impersonal force cannot know anything. There are many other examples in the scripture which time will not permit us to examine. Suffice it to say that the Holy Spirit has all of the attributes of not just personhood, but divine personhood.
As God, He is fully worthy of worship and obedience. Another error common about the Holy Spirit is also related to His personhood. We may recognize the personality attributes of the Holy Spirit, but forget that He is a distinct person. Error number two. The Holy Spirit is an extension of God, not God Himself. Correction number two. The Holy Spirit is fully God and equal to the Father and Son. Recently, a Christian asked me if the Holy Spirit was an extension of God. As Christians, we so often refer to Jesus and think of Jesus as the center of our faith and expressions that we forget the Holy Spirit. Certainly, the Holy Spirit wants us to be focused on the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus said this was one of the major roles of the Holy Spirit. He, the Holy Spirit, shall glorify me, Jesus. But is the Holy Spirit an extension, as if he is something separate from God? Not at all. The scriptures describe the Holy Spirit as having all of the attributes of God. The Holy Spirit is omniscient. He knows the mind of God and the hearts of men. Nothing is beyond his knowledge. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent. He is present in every believer and through all of creation. And the Holy Spirit is omnipotent. Only God has the power of creation. The last error we will examine has to do with the Holy Spirit's role in our lives. This is an error we may classify as an error of intention. The scripture is replete with statements about God's love for His people. For God so loved the world. The love of God has been poured out within our hearts. And by this, the love of God was manifested in us. As human beings, we tend to equate love with good things. When we love someone, we give them good things. We share our best with them. When we want others to love us as we want to be loved, we want them to do to us and for us what we would personally desire. Even Jesus remarked about human expression of love when he said, Now suppose one of you fathers ask his son for a fish. He will not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he asks for an egg, he will not give him a scorpion, will he? But if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The scripture also says that every good and perfect gift is from our heavenly Father. Therefore, many Christians assume that one of the Holy Spirit's functions is to provide Christians with material or earthly blessings. Error number three. The Holy Spirit blesses obedient Christians with health, wealth, and prosperity. This is a very controversial and difficult error because it goes to the very heart of God's character and love. If God loves us, doesn't He want us to have good things? But this error assumes that what God defines as good things is always the same as what we define as good things. In fact, Nowhere in the Bible does God specifically promise the Christian that he will have health, wealth, or prosperity. Some Christians may be rich while others are poor. Some Christians may have influence in society and power while others lead quiet lives that are not regarded by anyone. There are certain promises that are universal for all Christians everywhere at all times. These include promises of salvation, forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and spiritual growth for the person who is walking with God. But there are no universal promises in the Bible that God will provide health, wealth, or prosperity. The Bible does say that God will provide for our needs, but it does not say that God will provide those needs apart from hard work, or that what we think we need is what God thinks we need. Correction number three. The Holy Spirit's work is primarily a work of character and testimony about Jesus Christ. Because the Holy Spirit indwells every believer in Jesus Christ, every believer should be in the process of growing to become like Jesus in character. As we learned earlier, the Holy Spirit will never express character traits that are different from God the Father and God the Son. Since He lives in us, we can know that He will express Himself according to God's character through us when we live in obedience to Him. Consider these important words about the work of the Holy Spirit. To each one is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. The kinds of gifts the Holy Spirit gives have nothing to do with personal prosperity. Rather, they have everything to do with service to others and to God. This does not mean that God does not give some people wealth. Indeed, He does. 
but look carefully at why the scripture says God gives some people wealth, so that he will have something to share with the one who has need. Even in this, God's primary concern is for our character and whether or not we are using what wealth we might have in service to him and to others. But what else does the Spirit do? God has chosen you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit. Sanctification is the process of freeing us from sin and making us like Jesus in our character. Notice that the scripture says that this is the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer. The Holy Spirit is primarily concerned with empowering us in our witness for Christ because it is the character of Christ that he wants to emulate in us. A Christian who is not growing in character cannot have a proper testimony about who Jesus is and thus have an impact with others on Christ's behalf. In closing today's lesson, let's review our main points of today's study about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the triune God who empowers those who perform the commands of God the Father. The role of the Holy Spirit in the Christian's life is empowerment, to convict, guide, teach, and provide special abilities necessary to serve God. And the Holy Spirit has all of the attributes of divine personality, and His work in the Christian is primarily a work of character and testimony about Jesus Christ. Each of the weekly Together Through the Bible studies have a matching Bible study worksheet you can use to aid you in your study of God's Word. And this week's guide that is available free online at eagletv.mn. Each four-page study guide contains the major highlights of the weekly study, scripture references, along with practical questions to help you apply what you learn from these studies. Feel free to use these guides with your church or cell group. And remember, the guides are always available at eagletv.mn. If you missed any part of today's Together Through the Bible, then go online to eagletv.mn and watch it in its entirety in Mongolian or in English. No sign-up is required. Simply click on the Bible Studies main selection and then choose an online study video. We also, we also want, want to make, make this, this entire 10-part series, part series on God's, God's character and man's ethics available to you as a DVD. This 10-part series is available on two DVDs. Volume 1 contains episodes 1 through 5. Volume 2 contains episodes 6 through 10. And each DVD also includes the study guides for each episode and additional free study guides on other topics to help you in your spiritual growth. These DVDs can be used for personal enrichment or as a way to facilitate more in-depth Bible study with your church or cell group. To purchase one or both DVDs, call Eagle TV at 463-088. That's 463-088. DVDs are only 5,000 tuprics. When you call, we'll give you instructions on how to receive a copy of either volume of this study. Thanks for watching today's episode of Together Through the Bible, a production of Eagle Broadcasting Company, sponsored by the Among Foundation.